Holy cow, here we are again, and it is now a whole new year, a whole new set of stats, and we're starting off with January 2024. I'm going to go through these stats a lot faster this year or because I don't want to bore you or slow things down, but just know that we have all the stats at our fingertips as well. So if there's an area in the Racine area that you want to know the stats for, let us know up front. But here we go right after this. Let's jump right into what January is telling us about 2024. Yeah. Uh, here we go. And welcome back. So here I am back again with more stats for you guys in the year 2024, and we're going to jump right into it. So as you know that we hit a number of different stats for different municipalities, and this time, because it was only one month, I'm not going to show some slides because the slides are not really as impactful when we're not comparing month on month, but I will give you the stats for January. So in Racine, the average list price for Racine was $198.29. Racine people, you are still overlisting your houses because the average sale price in January was only $177 and $85. So we are overlisting our houses by about $12,000. And that's a problem because we keep overlisting our prices, we keep overlisting our homes, we're going to get lower prices. And that is a problem. So this is compared, obviously, January to January. This is the average list price to sale price. Come on, Racine, we got to get our list prices into a more reasonable situation. And I know you're selling them really quickly, but some of you are not. And that's what's bringing this average down a little bit. So, however, let's take a look at the new listings. So here we go. So in Racine this month, we had 50 new listings in January. That's great, especially when you consider that we only sold 33 in January. So that's bringing our absorption rate up just a little bit. And so we'll talk right about that immediately right now. So last year, our absorption rate was 0.85 of a month. And this year in January, our absorption rate was 0.97. Now, our absorption rate is still really low. That needs to be closer to a three or a four as far as our absorption rate for a healthy market. But we're trending in the right direction. Anything that we go over last year, any number that goes up on that, that's great. And that is because we listed 50 houses, but we only sold 33. So that left us a little bit of a deficit. That's awesome. But we need to do better than that because the average listings of what we need in Racine is we really, well, when things were a lot better, we had 200 listings a month. If we at least get to 100 listings a month and 75 sold, that will bring our numbers so much more in line with where they need to be. All right, but that's just new listings, et cetera. So let us go to what we've got for the sale to list. This again is getting better. Last year in January, our sale to list was 94.9, so just under 95%. This year, our sale to list, which means how close we are from our sale prices to our list prices, is actually 95.80%. So that is some better, Racine. We are doing better with that, but we still need to get those numbers up. It really should be closer to, well, if you're dealing with a good agent, their number is going to be like 99, 100, 101, 102, because their list prices are going to be really in line with their sale prices, and they're only going to have small anomalies. So when you're looking for your agent this year, um, to sell your house, make sure you ask them what their sale to list percentage is because the market average is 95.8. And if it is 95.8, well, that's not so good. So anyway, we've already talked about absorption rate, the average days on market. So let's talk about the average days on market. Actually, let's go to this one so you can zoom in a little bit, see me a bit better. Our average days on market last year were 33.2. We've actually dropped, but only by 0.3 of a percentage. We've dropped to, uh, sorry, last year was 32.9. We haven't dropped, we went up a little bit and that's okay because 33.2 is still a really good average days on market. Uh, we really, though, we want it to be more like 120. That's what the average should be. Again, a healthy market's gonna be higher on that. It's gonna create more, comp more competition, but the biggest thing is it's gonna bring more buyers out because they have confidence that they're not gonna see a house in the morning and not have a chance to bid on it by that evening. So 
um, watch out for that. And by the way, if you're listing with an agent, ask them how quickly they get offers on their property. If they're telling you within 24 hours, that's a red flag because that means they're not giving it enough exposure time on the market for your house to be seen by everybody and get in all of the offers that possibly could have it. Really what you want is two to three days at least on the market so that everybody has a chance to put their, to dip their toe in the water and have a shot at your house. So we really want that to be 120 days for the average days on market. Now we're adding a new stat in for 2024 that we haven't previously and that's the sale to assess. So sale to assess means most of you got your tax bills in December and you know what the city assesses your house at, but that is not likely to be your sale price. If you have an average house in your neighborhood, not a distressed one and not an overblown one, your average price is probably your sale price is actually going to be 143%. So if your house is assessed at 100, you can expect to receive about 143,000 for the actual sale price of that house. Now, the other thing that means is that you need to um, you need to be paying attention to the fact that sale to assessed is your an average house for your neighborhood. So that means for your neighborhood, is your house in good condition? Doesn't have to have granite countertops if your neighborhood doesn't support granite countertops, but an average price needs to be an average price. Let's quickly run through the Mount Pleasant numbers here. Average list to sale price in Mount Pleasant this month was 428 for the list price and 338 for the sale price. Mount Pleasant, what's happening? You have been doing this now for consistently a few months where you are really overlisting your houses. Get those prices down. You're probably going to get, if you were to start listing your houses more at 375, you'd probably be getting an average sale price of 350 instead of 338. So you're really, really hurting yourself if you're in Mount Pleasant and you're overlisting your home. There's definitely some people in Mount Pleasant who are overlisting for our average to be 428 on the uh, list price and 338 on the sale price. That's a lot of overlisting. Um, that actually harms you. And if you want to know more about that, give us a call. Um, in Mount Pleasant, however, there were only 17 new listings, but only 11 of them sold. So six of you did not sell, even though you listed in that month. And that means there might be something wrong. And maybe you're one of those overpriced homes that needs to bring their pricing down. Maybe that's why. And that is one of the most common. There are two, there are actually two main reasons why your house doesn't sell within that first 30 days in our current market. One reason is because your agent isn't doing any additional marketing other than slapping it on the MLS, which of course feeds to Zillow and Realtor.com and all of those other things. But if your agent is just slapping it on the MLS and they're not doing any additional marketing, no social media, no postcards, no open houses, um, obviously most people put a sign in the yard, but still sign in the yard's a really good thing. Uh, don't miss out on that one to 2% of people that buy a house based on the sign in the yard. Uh, but you know, if they're not doing open houses, they're not really hitting the ground with Facebook. They're not really hitting the ground with Instagram or YouTube or, you know, all of these other things to advertise your house. They may not be doing what's best for you. Make sure they've got their marketing in line. Um, otherwise, you know, that's why you're getting those much, much lower prices. But the other reason is because your house is overpriced. If you overprice your house, so two reasons. One is your agent who isn't marketing right. Either they didn't take professional photos, they didn't put it on any social media, they didn't do any of those things to actually market your house. Or number two, your list price is too high, which means you might have a weak agent because they're not willing to be honest with you. Or you might have a strong agent who's being honest with you, but you're not listening to them. So pay attention. If you have a strong agent who's saying, look, this is too high a price. We need to bring it down. Listen to them. Pay attention to them. But also double check their marketing. Make sure that you have had professional photos. Make sure that that agent or someone has come in and actually like staged your place for photos so that it doesn't mean, staging doesn't have to be hiring a professional stager. The really good thing in staging is that you really wanna be paying attention in staging to the flow of your house when people walk through it. So your furniture may be set up really well for you to live that way. That might be how you like to live. It may not be a good flow for people walking through your house smoothly and feeling like there's lots of space in your house that they can use because they're going to arrange their furniture differently than you. 
So arrange the furniture so you have a good flow. That's well, number one part of staging. Number two part of staging is work with an agent who will come in and give you staging tips at the very least and say, hey, let's change this color to this color and let's do this to this and let's do these minor little changes that really make your house pop in the photos and really make it stand out from the competition. So that's part of marketing as well. So make sure that your marketing is right and your pricing is right and that's how you're gonna get that. So Mount Pleasant, you gotta bring that down. Your sale to list, however, is also worse than Racine. Your um, sale to list in 24 is better than 2023, however. In 2023, you were only getting 94.4. Now you are getting 96.5, which means that your prices on your list prices are dropping and then you're getting an offer. That's how that sale to list comes in that tight because it's not sale to original list price. It's sale to the last list price that you had. That's how that data comes out. Now, your absorption rate is definitely an improvement over last year in Mount Pleasant. It went from 89 to 135 so a one one month and a third now instead of less than a month so that's excellent and your average days on market in 2024 are going up and they are trending in the correct direction last year your average days on market were only 21 you've actually doubled that now to 44 which is actually positive for bringing confidence to people in the mount pleasant market now in caledonia you guys you're also way over listing your houses because in caledonia your average list price was 395,000 and your average Average sale price was only 253. Wow, what? That is like $150,000 off almost. Well, okay, I'm terrible with math. It's really $140,000 off, but that's a really, really big gap. You need to close that gap. However, you are bringing up your absorption rate. Your absorption rate last year was one and a half months, 1.49, and now you have 1.62, so that's climbing up, which is good. Uh, your average, your sale to list price, however, is pretty much about the same. It's only gone up a half of a percent. Last year, you were at 96.20, and now you're at 96.70, so you're really not off so much on that. But you do have only 13 sold listings and 22 new listings. That's why your absorption rate is going up, which is positive, but not so much. Your average days on market for Caledonia have also gone up, which is a positive thing overall um, from 24 last year to only to 40 this year. So that is super positive. So really Caledonia, the only thing that you've got to correct right now in your market is your overlisting prices. You got to bring your prices down to more reasonable where they actually, where people are actually buying, not just where people are like where you want to list it. What your dreams and your hopes are not always going to be what the buyer wants. But if you really are true about selling your house, then you need to bring those listing prices down, probably closer to 325 as an average. An average list price in Caledonia right now is probably about 325, not 395, especially not when your average sale price is 253. You bring it down to 325, you're more likely to get 300 as your average sale price. So we want those, that gap to be closed between those two numbers. Anyway, I just wanted to do a really quick overall today. This one didn't go as long as our last few, so that's good. We're going to try and keep it under 15 minutes. If you found any value in this, any help of this, or if you want any other information, drop us a comment below. Let us know what information you'd like, and we'll be happy to give that back to you. If, however, um, you want information on a different municipality, drop a comment below, or you can also send an email to Kimberly at TAMTHomes.com. I will put that in the description below so that it's easy for you to find. And thanks for joining us. Make sure that if you've found any value in this content, you click like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any of our content. Not all of our content is real estate related specifically with stats, that's only once a month, but then the rest of it is other information that you wanna know if you wanna be living in Racine. Thanks so much for joining us, bye for now.